Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on Chapter 2, Functions and Graphs, and we're up to 2.6, Functions and Transformations. And this lesson is looking at transformations of functions as graphs. In Pure Mathematics 1, we learned how transformations of graphs can be expressed in function language. In this lesson, we'll look at how a number of separate transformations can be combined into one single transformation. These you should have met before, but um, they are important to remember. You might want to make a note of them before you actually try to do any of the work in the lesson. f of x plus a is a translation by the vector 0a. The graph moves up a units. f of x plus a, where you're adding a to the x values, is a translation by the vector minus a0. The graph moves left a units. A times by f of x is a vertical stretch with scale factor a, a stretch in the y direction. f of ax, where you're multiplying the x values by a, is a horizontal stretch with scale factor 1 divided by a. That's a stretch in the x direction. f of minus x reflects the function in the y-axis, the left-right reflection. Minus f of x reflects the function in the x-axis an up-down reflection. As I say, you might want a note of these before you carry on. One thing to stress before we do carry on is, you'll notice the brown ones here, you're adding a to the whole function, and the whole function does go up by a. Uh, here you're multiplying the whole function by a, and you do get a vertical stretch with scale factor a. So if it's y, or the whole function that's being operated on, what you would expect to happen is what happens. You add on a to the whole function, um, the whole function gets a times bigger. That's not the case when you operate on x. So if you add a to the x values, you'll notice that the translation vector is minus a0. The graph moves left a unit, not right, which is what you would guess. f of ax, where you're multiplying the x values by a, it's a horizontal stretch with scale factor 1 over a. So that's important to remember. If you're operating on the whole function, it's intuitively what you would expect it to be. If you're only operating on the x values within the function, it's back to front. It's the opposite of what you would expect it to be. When you're combining transformations, do be careful on the order in which you carry out the transformations. It should be obvious if you just read the things carefully, but it is easy to slip up. So if you had bf of x plus a, you have to do the bf of x first, multiplied by the b, and then the second transformation will be adding the a. If you wanted to do it the other way around, you'd need to include brackets. That would mean you add a to f of x first, and then the second transformation would be that you multiplied by b. If you had a times f of bx, first of all, you'd have to do the bx, multiply the x values by b. After you've done that, the second transformation would be multiplying the whole function by a. Okay, there's just one long example in this lesson with five parts to it. I'll let you have a go at doing these first, pause the video, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at these questions together. So the first question, we've got a, a drawing of a, a function here, y equals f of x. We aren't told what the function is and it doesn't matter. Looks a bit like a cubic, it may be one. What does matter is these key points, the crossing points on the axis. So there's a crossing point at the origin, zero, zero. There's a crossing point at four, zero. There's a crossing point at 12, zero. Maximums and minimums matter on these questions as well. So the local maximum here is 2, 2, and the local minimum is the coordinate 8, minus 6. Now, this first question, y equals 2, f of x, minus 3. First thing we have to do is the 2, f of x. 2, f of x is a vertical stretch with scale factor 2, a stretch in the y direction. That means the x coordinates will stay the same but the y-coordinates will be doubled. 
So keep an eye on these points. In each case, the X coordinates are going to stay the same, but the Y coordinates will be twice as much. The curve becomes that. And these values on the X axis, even when uh, you double the, the Y values, it doesn't matter because you've got double zero is zero. So these crossing points on the X axis do stay the same. But the maximum is twice as high, the minimum is twice as low. Then we need to deal with the minus three. That's the second part of the transformation. Well, minus three is a translation by the vector zero minus three. That means that the whole graph is gonna move down by three units. The X coordinates will stay the same. The Y coordinates will all go down by three. So keep an eye on all five of this time. All five will change as the graph moves down. So this crossing point on the y-axis goes down to zero minus three. The minimum goes down to two, one, the maximum rather. The minimum goes down to eight minus 15. You'll notice we haven't said what the crossing points are here on the x-axis. We don't know what those are, so we can't say what they are. That's the first question complete. So that is y equals two of fx, uh, two f of x minus three. Second question, y equals f of x plus four plus three. We've gone back to the original function again here. So this is the original function, f of x. So same starting point as for the first question. The first thing we'll need to do is the f of x plus four. Now here we're adjusting the x values. So it's back to front from what you would expect. It's a translation by the vector minus four zero. The graph moves left four units. That means that all the X coordinates are gonna go down by four units. The Y coordinates will be the same, but the whole thing is just gonna to shift to the left, giving you that. So the crossing point to become minus four zero. This one is at the origin and this one's at eight zero. And the maximum there is at minus two, the minimum there is at four. Now we need to do the plus three. Well, plus three is a translation by the vector zero three. The graph's gonna move up by three units. The X coordinates will stay the same. The Y coordinates will go up by three units. So when the whole thing shifts upwards, you get that. So the maximum's gone up to minus two, five, this crossing point on the y-axis has gone up to zero, three, and this minimum has gone up to four, minus three. Again, we don't know these crossing points on the x-axis, so we can't write them down. That's the second example done. That's y equals f of x plus four plus three. The third example was this, y equals a half f of two x. Again, we've gone back to the starting point, same as before. That is the original function, and those are the significant points on it. First of all, we need to do f of 2x. That is a horizontal stretch. We're operating on the x values here. So it's the scale factor of a half, the opposite from what you would expect. The x coordinates will be halved. The y coordinates are going to stay the same. When that happens, the whole thing gets squeezed up. So the X values all get halved. So that becomes one, two, that becomes two, zero, that becomes four minus six, that becomes six, zero. The next thing we need to do is the half. Well, a half F of two X is a vertical stretch with scale factor a half to stretch in the Y direction in which the Y coordinates will be halved. The X coordinates, they'll stay the same. Halving all the Y coordinates gives us that. So this maximum comes down to one, one, this minimum goes up to four minus three. And that's it finished. That is Y equals a half of F of two X. The fourth question, Y equals minus F of X minus two. Got the original function again here. The first thing we have to do is the F of X minus two. Um, we're operating on the X values here. It's a translation by the vector plus two, zero, which means the graph is gonna move right by two units. There it is, shifted right by two units. So this has moved right to two, zero, that moves right to four, two, to six, zero, 10 minus six, and 14, zero. Now the minus. Well, the minus is a reflection. 
minus f of x is a reflection in the x-axis, an up-down reflection. I'll leave the original graph there so you can see how it looks when it reflects. You would get something like that. All the top bits reflect down, all the bottom bits reflect up. That's a little bit confusing. That is what you will have. So y equals minus f of x minus 2 will be that. So what was a maximum has reflected down to become a minimum with the same x-coordinate, but the y-coordinates flipped from plus 2 to minus 2. These crossing points on the x-axis have stayed the same. What was a minimum has reflected up to a maximum, and minus 6 has reflected upwards to plus 6. That's question 4 complete. And question 5, y equals f of minus x minus 2. That's the original function again. First thing we have to do is f of minus x, which is a reflection in the y-axis, a left-right reflection. So everything on the right-hand side is going to reflect over there to the left, and this bit on the left will reflect to the right, giving us that. So 4, 0 has reflected over to become minus 4, 0. 8 minus 6 is reflected over to become minus 8 minus 6, and so on. The only other thing we need to do is the minus 2. Minus 2 is a translation by the vector 0 minus 2, which means the graph is going to move down by 2 units. Want it to move down 2 units, that is what you will have. So the minimum has moved down to minus 8 minus 8. The maximum has moved down to minus 2, 0. And the crossing point on the y-axis has moved down to 0 minus 2. Um, we can't say anything else. We don't know what this crossing point here is. Okay, that gets us to the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, turn to page 34 and have a go at exercise 2F. Thank you very much for listening. That is the end of the lesson. And cheerio.